Friday 11th of May 1917. Not a breath of wind, dead calm. The whole earth is trembling like a continual earthquake. Flares of all colours light the horizon. Everybody is watching the guns flashing and on the highest spot to get a view of it, if possible, but the hill in front is too high to see over. I think at 10 p.m., not a shot to be heard. Perfectly calm for a short while, then occasional big guns would speak out and crash of the bursting shells from both sides. About one every few minutes till midnight when a few more of the guns began to chip in. The, this one actually, and this one, were actually given to him by the army. They were their own diaries that they carried, carried with them. And they're canvas bound. And it really is amazing how much information they can fit in just such a small area. He's written across and around the edges and that to get all his thoughts and all his feelings into it. Postcards were actually given with Red Cross um, parcels and quite, uh, there's a few in there that actually um, he lists what he got because he was so excited about what was in the Red Cross parcel and uh, tobacco is quite high on the list. But what really amazes me is these diaries um, were all given to the, or delivered to the, to the museum in a styrofoam box because the family were cleaning out and they just put all this stuff in a styrofoam box and it had been stored somewhere and then it just was handed here. <laughs> By February 1919 the war is over and he's back in England waiting for a ship home. Uh, He's disgusted at this point that the base and staff heads and the munition workers who've been living in luxury and pleasure during the war are all going home already to get all the greeting and welcome. But the unfortunate digger who has put up with all the inconveniences and hardships has to wait. Um, he says, there's little or no pleasure in England now the war is over, with thousands of war workers, men and women, out of work. But he does say that he goes quite often to see the pictures. In fact, a large part of his diary is descriptions of many of the short films that are shown. But at this time, even though you know there are some things that interest him, you get the picture that he just he wants to get home again. Um, it's been four or five years since he left. Um, hasn't that's a long time, especially when you're young. Reading these diaries really does let you get a feeling for what it was like, but at the same time, it, I don't think it's possible to really understand how terrible it was. 